Where do ideas come from when you run into a problem or challenge that you need a solution for? Doing what I do in construction, that comes up daily. But people in any craft or art encounter the same thing. In my case right now, I need to incorporate a drawing tablet into my workflow for creating YouTube content for my channel. Yet the design of my current space doesn't really lend itself to putting the tablet right in the center of my pretty limited countertop space. I have limitations, certainly, but I look at the countertop overhang and think, okay, is there a way to build an extension off of that to give me a shelf for the tablet, or will that more likely just get in the way? I could build a fold-down shelf into the windowsill. Now, that's an idea that might also give me the flexibility to get the shelf out of the way at times. The simple answer is you just start playing with ideas and working with what you've got. You try to see the possibilities of the configuration of your space and begin trying things. This approach really applies to any creative discipline that you may be involved with, such as construction, to music, and to art. My friend and music teacher Amy Nolte did a video on this where she talks about how she sometimes challenges her creativity by trying different things and explains one approach this way. Have you ever sat down at your instrument to play? and just play whatever comes out? Have you ever noticed that if you sit at a different instrument, say a Fender Rhodes or maybe a Wurlitzer, or if you press a different kind of button on your keyboard to make a different kind of keyboard sound, and then you sit down and just start playing, different ideas come out? Ideas that I never would have thought of on my Fender Rhodes will come out when I sit at my piano. Sometimes just putting yourself at a new instrument or pressing a button on your keyboard can give you all kinds of new ideas that you never knew you had before. Things that weren't coming out that now are coming out just because you pressed a button or, or changed instruments. Amy makes a good point that very often we get the best ideas when we think outside the norm, when we kind of break out of a box that we may be in in order to expand the opportunity to think of really some creative solutions to problems that we encounter. The quality of the solutions we come up with is a reflection at times of how much energy and effort we've put into developing our craft or trade over time. But always thinking creatively along the path of beginner to becoming a pro like Amy is with music, well, it just helps us get there sooner. Another artist I follow, an art artist named Marco Busey, gives us an example of creativity when he explains in a recent video of how he takes 2D paintings that he has done and converts them into 3D animations with really some amazing results. Hey everyone, I'm a 2D artist. I make digital paintings like this. But using some basic 3D techniques, I was able to take that painting and add this dimensional cinematic quality. If you already have 2D skills, this 3D stuff is surprisingly simple to do. As you can probably imagine, I have to work a lot harder at understanding music theory with Amy than I do in following Marco with his 2D to 3D examples. Let me explain the basics of what he is doing in a simple 2D to 3D example of my own. Imagine these balls and boxes are in a 2D environment, simply placed on a large flat pane of glass. The sizes of the objects give you the impression that the bigger objects in the foreground are closer in perspective than the smaller ones in the back. But since it's two-dimensional and we're only looking at balls and boxes, it doesn't really hold our interest very well. Now let's suppose that we have three large panes of glass and we're going to spread them out about 10 feet from each other with a box and ball on each pane, again reflecting perspective because of their sizes, but in this case that's really true because the glass panes are separated. Now if we take our virtual camera and begin to pan left and right and randomly, we see that our objects appear to be moving independently of one another and our interest level is increased by their relative movements. If we move the middle pane of glass down and shift the back pane to the right, this is the effect we see. The only thing left to do is to try to get out of here without crashing into the red ball on the right. So when Marco does this with his paintings, the animation is really fascinating. Creative people like Amy and Marco, thinking outside the norm about their crafts, only makes them better. The same is true for the rest of us. So back to the task at hand, which is to come up with a way to build in a little more countertop space to my desk to make room for my new drawing tablet. The original desk was built in about a day from some simple plans as a prototype for a next desk that would be coming down the road. 
and I ended up using this a lot longer than I intended to. Now, it's still my prototype to try out ideas on that I may want to incorporate in the next desk to come, which hopefully is going to be pretty soon. That's one great advantage we carpenters have over a lot of other crafts or skills. Many times it's a part of our process to build something, to scrap it, and start all over again before we have to commit to a specific design. With that in mind, I started with the fold-down design and tried it for about a week. It worked okay, but there were a couple of problems that I began to see. First, this corner, this right corner, has to go because it seems to attract a lot of attention from my elbow and the chair when just making routine movements around the desk. Second, I need to be able to move it up and down, that is, slide it up and down the wall. The desk height is fine if I'm standing, which I do a lot, but if I'm sitting in my chair, which I would prefer to do more of, the upper height of the drawing tablet resting on the shelf is not a good and workable solution. If I can build the functionality of an adjustable countertop for where the tablet is and design it into my future desk, I think that would be a good result. I like this kind of a design as a starting point and I think it should work fine. I'm sure I'll have to make an adjustment to my pieces when the top of the desk lines up with the adjustable shelf to get it to line up flat. I decided to break out the CNC machine to make this cut, not because it was necessarily going to be easier, but I just haven't used the CNC machine much lately. Ultimately, I didn't have my tie-down blocks snug enough, so my piece moved around a little bit as it was being cut, and I had to trim up the corners anyhow. I marked the wall where the studs are and transferred that onto my shelf support piece because I'm going to thread all thread rods into the studs and put knobs on the rods to attach the adjustable shelf in place. I was able to use the top piece from my first fold-down design and got rid of that sharp corner I mentioned earlier. I made a video on this methodology for spinning all thread rods into studs, which is by far my most viewed video by about a million views. This was one of those out-of-the-box ideas that was new to me when I began experimenting with it, but not like reinventing the wheel. But a lot of people have liked it, so check it out if you haven't seen it yet. This is a good method to accomplish your purpose when you need to secure things to a wall like floating shelves, or in this case, my adjustable shelf. The process is very simple in that I drill a pilot hole into the studs, trying to get it as straight as I can, but mostly as perpendicular as possible to the studs. The size of the hole is just a touch smaller than the size of the all-thread rod I'm using, which in this case is 3 8 inch. Then I use a piece of the all-thread to cut the threads into that hole about 2 inches deep into the stud. I like to pull that rod and vacuum out the holes to remove wood chips and shavings, then spin my permanent piece of all-thread in place. In this case, I'm having it stick out from the wall just enough to allow the knobs to cover the end of my rods coming out of the wall. That's basically it. The rod is very snug in the hole, and even though the threads are machine threads and not wood threads, they still work really well. In this situation, I'm actually putting direct tension on those threads by screwing the knobs in place. We'll see if they loosen up over time, but if so, I can simply pull them and reinstall them with liquid nails or some other type of adhesive. Here is the issue I was thinking I would have to deal with. In a perfect world, or in my 3D SketchUp drawing, these two surfaces would line up when the knobs are tightened. But in the real construction world, this rarely ever happens. So to get these two surfaces lined up, I need to shim out the bottom of my adjustable shelf about a quarter of an inch. By adding that piece on the back side of the shelf, these surfaces are now in alignment. It wasn't so much an oversight when I built my initial prototype desk which I intended to be a stand-up desk primarily, but when I prefer to sit down and work, the lack of knee space is a big flaw. At the time, I really wanted drawers and storage more than anything to be incorporated in the desk, but it's obvious I will enjoy the functionality and the knee space that comes along with this adjustable shelf. Now, if I can just learn to draw like Marco, I should be set. I'm looking forward to working with the new addition to my layout and workflow, but let me show you a little bit about the design for the next desk. First, I've seen videos where computer components are built into the desk, which is really a cool concept to me, so I've been thinking about doing that in this center compartment area. As you can see, I'm planning for the knee space as well, and also including some type of adjustable footrest inside that space when I'm sitting. 
I'll include the printer in this interior space because anytime you build something in a corner like this, you always end up with a lot of wasted space if you don't think of creative ways to try to use it. Because I'm a lefty, I will probably switch the drawing tablet over to the left side of the desk and may think about still doing something with an adjustable top for the drawing tablet. The top will definitely be made out of solid surface countertop material, and I already have pieces of that material in the shop to choose from that I've collected over the past few years. I will definitely have at least this number of drawers, and I usually try to create maximum access to storage space in any piece of furniture that I build. Lots of interesting projects are in the works. Hit that subscribe button to stay in touch with what's going on around Dobbs Workshop. And as always, thanks for watching.